in this episode of It Came From My Side Laundry Room. We're going to take a look at some books, look at some toys, and I have a horrible confession to make. So, stick around. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to It Came From My Side of the Laundry Room. And we're still celebrating Halloween here as I got my bunny hat on, got the pumpkins, and we're going to take a look at some spooky and interesting tricks and treats this evening. Now, I thought what better way to celebrate Halloween than take a look at some of the books I had as a kid that helped spark my love affair of monsters. So, let's look at some books. Now I have a very interesting little mishmash of books here that I grew up with and for some reason they have stood the test of time and I still have them. Now some of them are very kid friendly, some of them are more on the mythology side of things. But let's take a look at some of the kid friendly ones first. Now this is one of the very first ones I can remember owning. and from 1980. Now I might have had some of these sooner but this one jumps out at me. This is the Mix-Up Monsters. Now anyone that remembers current catalogs that your moms or dads may have looked at where you order wrapping paper and just little gifty things, cards, I mean I think they had not the shirt tails but some other animal folk spokesman and stuff like that but my mom was a big current fanatic always ordered wrapping paper through them greeting cards all that jazz but with this book the mixed up monsters I don't even know if they sell books like this anymore but you had three different flaps here that you could flip up and the first monster here is the gruesome grump grabs goodies and gobbles ghosts so we got this cute little ghost up here and he's a weird little fellow. But you flip this, you can change his head. And now he's the fuddled fiend grabs goodies. Blah, blah, blah. He tickles tots and twiddles toes. So you keep flipping here the greedy glutton, gulps grasshoppers, and grows gardens. What a lovely fellow. The brave brute boxes bears. Interesting picture. And bends barbells. Look at that. He's sucker punching that poor teddy bear. Man, what a jerk. Now we got the persnickety pest pinches people and plucks poppies. Now this is a picture that will get you in trouble nowadays. Oh, he's boxing bears. That'd get you in trouble too. But I, I'm not even going to comment. You draw your own conclusions, but that just looks wrong. But as a kid in 1980, nothing wrong with it. But now, whoo, that monster would be behind bars with a <clears throat> with a listing on a sexual predator website. The slippery scoundrel startles slobs and sneaks snacks. The dastardly demon dazzles damsels and decorates dragons. Oh, look at that. He's painting that cute little dragon. The bratty beast bullies bumpkins and bursts balloons. But that's it. <clears throat> but you flip these things, you can make different monsters out of it. And like I said, very kin kid friendly, but I love this book growing up. And it just, you know, when you become desensitized to monsters that are this cute, there's only one way to go, and that's up. 
for loving monsters. Now, <clears throat> Mercer Mayer, very famous for the Little Critter storybooks. But growing up, I didn't know about Little Critter. This dude was who I knew about. Little Monster. Now, Mercer Mayer's art, he jams it packed of... <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> it's finally fall here, and it's uh, fallen on me and crushed my sinuses. But anyway, he chocks his pictures full of little background critters and little, uh, like the little critter books that I've discovered, you know, a spider and a mouse, you know, so there's little people he introduces in them. But this is Little Monster. It's a character that I don't think you can find that much anymore. He kind of got the crap end of the stick in the Little Critter, Little Monster feud. But look at this art. Look at that dragon. That's beautiful. Little Critter had his faithful little dog monster thing but I just loved this art I loved exploring the background of all the other little monsters and background beasts I mean check out some of these dudes and dudettes they're pretty cool now this is just an ABC book but he has some Look at this. Professor Wormbog's Monster Zoo. Now that's a zoo I would love to go to in reality. And there's some really interesting folk in here that pop up in another book. But here we have Little Monster at Home. <clears throat> and I forgot to say, the copyright of these is 1978. This one's 79. Oh, and look. My parents wrote in it for me for my third birthday. But there's a little monster at home. And this is where I said there's a little hidden dude in all the pictures. And I would just spend time to try to find him in these books. And, oh, here's some of those other monster kids. But, look at this. Little Batman shout out. Robots. I mean, I always loved looking at other characters' bedrooms like this in books growing up. Because my bedroom sure as heck didn't look like that or have cool stuff in it. Oh, look, it's Halloween right here. Got the jack-o'-lantern, raking leaves. Good old time. Christmas. Now we got Little Monster's Bedtime Book. Also from 78. But here's some of those monsters from that zoo. Wormbog's Zoo. But it was monster tales of famous stories. Like here's Humpty Dumpty. Other little stories. Like the Yala Papas. Oh, Yalapapus, you silly beast, you think that paper is a feast? Yesterday's news is your favorite lunch, and you serve paper bags with friends come brunch. Here's the Wizzle. Looks like a... Looks like the Wuzzles were ripped off of him. Look at this cool ogre-looking dude. Like I said, great art, and I felt like... Or I feel like now as an adult Mercer Mayor was able to flex his artistic muscles a little bit more with this kind of stuff than with the Little Critter series. Here's Little Monster at School. 
Ooh, and I kind of beat this one up, also from 78. But this is your typical, this is school, don't be scared, we do cool stuff. Oh, look, he made some new friends. So, we'll skip that to go on to this one. Little Monster at Work. Now, I always used to love books like this, like the Richard Scary, that would use every available inch to put cool stuff in. Merry Christmas, 1979. But like the Richard Scary books, you know, it's a cityscape pictures and labeling everything. But the monster twist of this, I mean, look at this dude. Whoop. Super big. He runs off the page. All these other little monsters here. These were great books growing up. You know, I loved monsters, and this just fueled my imagination that I wanted to live in a monster town growing up like this. It's just sad that these books got left behind for Little Critter because, I mean, these are awesome. He's a fabulous artist and writer, and I really wish that these would have caught on a little bit more. That's that as far as the kitty kitty books go. Now here's another kid's book. Again, a one one that really fueled my imagination with monsters. This is Favorite Tales of Monsters and Trolls. And this had some real interesting artwork. Copyright on this is 77. And like the Three Billy Goats Gruff. Very beautiful artwork, but check out this troll. That is awesome. More Looks more like a frog. I mean, I guess they went that way because he lives under a bridge. But look at this hat. He has other little critters imprisoned in it. Has this cool bird thing sitting on his hat there. I mean, this artist really went all out. I mean, look at this. There's these little critters walking around. Now, I forget the artist's name, but like drew the pictures of hell where it's like all the little things with demons with faces on their butts and all that kind of weird crap, weird birds and stuff. That's what this is. This is a kid version of that, of those hell paintings. Look at the back of this coat. It's got a face on it. Whoa! Trying to do this and not block the mic. Look at that. Oh, the big billy goat pushed his butt off the bridge. Now the trolls and the pussycat. Now this is, I think, a story that Jan Brent has even done recently. An old tale of trolls that visited a house at night and a traveler with his pet polar bear staying the night and the polar bear scaring the trolls off and them saying oh it's just our cat here's one called the stone cheese look at this cool cyclops I know my buddy Slim appreciates a good cyclops as much as I do, and I really, I mean, I grew up with this one and the Harryhausen one being my two big cyclops of pop culture. Now this book, also another one that kind of focuses on old tales and myths, but Monsters of the Middle Ages. As you can see, this book is very beat up. I think I may have mentioned it in other episodes, but you know there's old like vinyl covered tape cases you could put you know 24 different tapes in it well i ripped the plastic tape holder out of it and carried it around like a briefcase and this is one of the books that i took with me all the time i guess i was a junior monster hunter that 
I could bust open my case and know what I was going to be fighting. Unfortunately, I drew all in this. Well, at least the first page. Copyright 71. I remember picking this up at a used bookstore when I was younger. But it has very medieval-inspired artwork. Like the woodcut kind. But it tells different stories, and it begins with life in the Middle Ages and how people were superstitious and astrology and such. But then it goes on to tell stories of, like, people with their feet on backwards. Or these hopping critters called the Monacoli. People from India, a type of person, creature, that instead of feeding themselves, smelled flowers. He had tales of giants, the manacore. And when I was older and read about these creatures, it's like my mind instantly went back to this. Here's the Lamia. And believe me, it wasn't lost to me that uh, she was anatomically correct, even though it's scaly and uh, snake-like. Boobs is boobs. Sorry, folks. Centaurs. Always like this picture. Chasing that dude out of his woods. Two-headed snakes that would hold on to each other and go down hills to chase people. Basilisks. Different dragons. And I know these books are silly, but my whole point is saying how I was surrounded by monsters. I mean, I grew up watching old black and white movies, the Harryhausen movies, the Sinbad movies, which are Harryhausen movies. These books, I mean, monsters were everywhere in my life. And I never gave them up. Cool unicorn picture. Like I said, they're silly. Thanks for uh, letting me flip through them. Go relive my childhood a little bit. And let me know if you guys had anything like that. I mean, does anyone else remember Little Monster? I mean, I know Little Critter's all the rage, but Little Monster. Any of you guys have fond memories of him and his crew? Anyway, here's a commercial. This morning, Billy looked like any other boy, but as the moon rose, he turned into a werewolf. He used new Pa's Halloween makeup kits. His friends did, too. Look, Mike's a vampire. Amy's a ghost. Pa's makeup is safer than masks. It never blocks vision, and it's hypoallergenic, too. So watch your kids turn into the creatures they really are with new Pa's Halloween makeup kits. Welcome back. Now, we're going to take a toytastic adventure. Before we take a look at some of these monstrous plastic critters in my collection, the confession. I used to have a very large collection of monster toys and horror movie toys. Uh, one of the things I collected most was Texas Chainsaw Massacre stuff. Love the movies. I had many different versions of Leatherface um, up into the mid-90s, I guess. Early 2000s. When they... Oh, Mike's in the way. 
anyway, um, everything from the McFarland toys to like Mezco stuff, um, just different knickknacks here and there. Now, the confession is, when you're fastly approaching 40 and expecting your first kid, you kind of don't know what to do. And unfortunately, a lot of the gruesome comics and toys that I had in my collection, I parted ways with. Because I... I mean, I didn't know what kind of environment to raise a kid in, and I didn't want that kind of stuff laying around at that time. I mean, of course I regret it now, because at that time, I didn't have my collection in the laundry room, and I was, you know, what stuff I did have was in boxes stored away. So, I mean, as my personal journey has evolved, I regret that decision, and, I mean... I don't regret it on one hand because I have great kids and that's the end-all be-all of the story. But, of course, I regret parting ways with a lot of things from my collection in that time period. But, first-time father, you don't know what to expect. But anyway, here's some things that made the cut and let's just jump right in as I drop one of them. Uh, and I, again, I apologize for this head cold that I have. Um, first thing, not really a monster per se. This falls into comic book toy territory. But this Scarecrow figure. Probably one of the best ones ever made. And it was the Shadow of the Bat, Tales of the Bat, whatever it was. One of the la later Kenner releases from the Batman line. <clears throat> Year on this dude is 1997. If I just love how monstrous they make the Scarecrow look. He's one of my favorite villains because of how he looks. And this is probably one of the best incarnations of him. He's got a little which all the it was the rave at one time. His eyes are attached to a plastic piece on the back of his hat. And if you were to shine a flashlight, it would make his eyes glow. And always, I mean, it was a neat feature. Just a little added bonus. He came with a huge sickle scythe that I do have somewhere. I think in my big accessories box. Which will be another episode of It Came From One Day. Where I pick through all the different accessories that I have for my toys. But, love this figure. He could be a tad bit more poseable. And he's kind of hard to stand up sometimes because he kind of has a club foot thing going here. But, great figure. Great. Now, in that same time period, of course, McFarlane Toys was all the rage. And there were some that were more rare than others. Some of those were the werewolf and the vampire from Wetworks. Now, to this day, I can't even tell you what Wetworks was really about. And at the time, we were just buying the comics for the art. And Wallace Portacio, he did a great job on Wetworks. Unfortunately, it's one of those titles where like one and two came out, and then it took five years for number three and four to come out. But they made toys. And these were, I mean, they're awesome. I don't know if you can catch the detail there. But great monstrous vampire look. Has the hair on there. These huge claws. Uh, cybernetic boots. Uh, that I don't even remember why. I mean, I guess it's just a cool aesthetic. But, great vampire figure. And the werewolf is neat. Very monstrous. He could go down to all fours. And his head could go up. Weird shape. I mean, yeah. Braided tail here. 
Very weird. He much better standing than in his uh, four-legged look. And he has battle damage on him, like he has a bite there on his thigh, some slashes up on his shoulder. But, I mean, it's a monster toy nonetheless, which is why I love it. The comic, I, I can't even comment on it anymore. It had nice art, that's about all I can remember. Now, be honest, I never had these toys growing up as a kid, and I found this dude much later on. But... Ghostbusters toys. This is uh, the police officer that turned into a skeleton dude. And I just, I mean, I love that. Looks great. Ah! Like I said, I never had any of the toys originally. But when I saw this guy out, I just, I had to get him. He's in pretty decent shape. I remember him from the original toys and always thought he was cool. But there you go. What years this dude made? 1988. Now here's some little nickety knacks now if you don't know this by now I'm a huge Smurfs fan I'll admit it I'm not too proud uh, mouse issues but here is a Smurf mummy love it has the one eye peeking out Here's a Smurf ghost. Real angry ghost, too. And a Smurf Jack Lantern head dude. That just looks straight up evil, especially for Smurf toys. Getting some shadow there, excuse me. But you can see that evil grin. And he just, I mean, he needs a carving knife in his hand to really set it off. But that's a great, great Smurf figure. Now, back in the day, before Pops were the rage, different things, little knickknacks like... Bear bricks, Q bricks, and these type of figures from, I believe they're Mezco. Let me check here in a second as I put this guy together. Because somehow his arms popped off. Glad, glad they just popped right back on. Let me check before I shows you. If it says, it does not. But I have this Frankenstein, these little guys. Things like this were all the rage before Pops really caught on. You could find almost anything cast in little, little people like this. And a whole bunch of different companies made them, but I believe this is Mezco. And, I mean, I just love the, like, 60s monster kids surf rat fink type art style for his face. If you can see, if it's not too shadowy. But, I saw him, and I just had to have him. I love the little furry vest. Like I said, it reminds me of the old 60s kind of art style. Of Frankenstein's monster and such in that rat fink hot rod era of monster art but he came in a two-pack with of course my favorite if you caught the episode a werewolf now of course he doesn't have any cool 
furry vest or anything, and he has a kind of not as stylized look, but very, very awesome. Let's see if he uh, says, yep, Mezco. Doesn't have a year, though. But love this figure. And the last one, made by, wow, Sideshow, before they were the maker of huge and intricate 12-inch uh, scale figures, when you could buy their toys just at any Walmart or Target, this creature from the Black Lagoon. Again, another monster that I just love. Great design, great movie, first one at least. And this little super deformed chibi-esque design, I mean, is nice. They did a great job. It's Sideshow, even as they were starting out in, this is from 98, they put a lot of detail and work into the figure. Let's see here, replace my head with his. <laughs> but awesome, awesome, awesome. And unfortunately, if I would have made better life decisions and kept my toys, I would have had a heck of a lot more to show you. And I could if I rifle through stuff. I have a lot of things that could be monster. I still have Godzilla stuff up here, and just different odds and ends, comic book monsters and such scattered about. But that's it for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I mean, it's kind of wonky, I guess, walk down memory lane, but I had fun. I hope you did too. Um, leave the comments of weird toy decisions you made, or just some little knick-knack monster toys that you have laying around. Anyway, keep being rad, stay dorky, thanks for watching, it came from my side laundry room. See you next time. Thank you for watching this episode presented by my side of the laundry room. Please check out some of these other recommended videos, and if you enjoyed what you've watched, please hit the subscribe button. You can also follow on Twitter, like on Facebook, and read up on My Side of the Laundry Room at our blog. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep being rad and stay dorky.